Hi, this is Mr. West, and today we're doing a Khan Academy tutorial on identify function transformations. Let's go ahead and get started. G is a transformation of F. That means it changes. The graph below shows F as a solid blue line and G as a dotted red line. Okay, so the transformation that's happening is we have, and I have some notes that I'm going to show you later, is this blue graph is getting moved up. So we need to figure out what that means. So here I have the different options. We have f of x plus 4, minus 4, and then f of x minus 4 in parentheses, which is different, and then f of x plus 4 in parentheses. What is the formula of g in terms of f? So how do we change f to get to g? So the different types of transformations we're talking about here are either vertical translations or horizontal translations. So here, uh, the first ones I've labeled, those are vertical translations. If we just have our function and we add a number to it, Okay, just on the outside, not next to x in the parentheses. It's either going to go up or down. And as you can see here, if we have this positive number that we're adding onto the outside, it's going to go up. And if we subtract, it's going to go down. And then horizontal translations, this is if it, it's in the inside. And I'm going to give you an example just so you're aware of what it looks like. So let's say we have y equals x squared as our parent function. If we had y equals parentheses, x minus 4 squared, that would be a move to the right, okay? Now, if it's just going up or down, it would look like this. See the difference between these two? This one's going up, this one's going to the right, and the difference is it's in the parentheses, then being squared. So it's think of it as next to x as horizontal, next to y, or on the outside, as vertical, okay? So in this case, we're moving it up four units, so we need to choose the plus four on the outside. Let's check it. Moving on. G is a transformation of F, okay? So the red one's being changed from the blue one. So we kind of need to see what's going on. To me, it looks like it's just shifting over to the left and nothing else. So we need to choose which one is being shifted to the left. As we're looking at these, we see that this is being added on the outside and this is being added on the outside. That means these cannot be our options. This is going up two units, this is going down two units. So it's one of these. Now, which is it? Well, let's take a look. We see here that the blue, ignore those for now, let me just erase them. We see that the blue, I thought this was gonna go shorter with erasing. <laughs> the blue uh, starts over here. I'm just gonna pinpoint the vertex. That's kind of an impor um, important point in these parabolas, and it looks like it moves over one, two, okay, to the left. So it's left two units. So if you're looking down here, your initial thought probably, and I swear there's a mode to erase quicker. <laughs> Let me just <laughs> go real fast, erase, erase, erase. Okay, so you probably thinking initially, oh, it's got, if we're going left two, it's gotta be this one. That's wrong. With the X, it's counterintuitive. It's actually, if we want to move to the left, we add. Because it's in the form y equals f of x minus h and then plus k. With the vertical, we add, it goes up. But with the horizontal, if we subtract, it goes to the right. And if we add, it goes to the left. So we want it to go to the left. We need to choose b as our option. Left two units, x plus 2. Next question. g is a transformation of f. Okay, so then it's the same thing. Look what's happening here. See how it's kind of going up higher than it was before? So take a look. It's not just moving up, it's changing. Okay, so this one isn't just a movement. This one is changing how it behaves. It's getting vertical faster, and it's getting down even faster. So everything vertical is getting stretched out. Think of like a rubber band. Okay, I'm gonna draw a quick rubber band here. And then if you stretch it out, Okay, it gets really stretched. That is like a vertical stretch. It's getting pulled in both directions, and that's what's happening here. How do you get a vertical stretch? Well, you get a vertical stretch. Let me erase some of this stuff. You get a vertical stretch in the base form. Okay, so here's our base form, f of x, right? Too close. <laughs> y equals f of x. You get a stretch by multiplying by a number out in front, and that number needs to be bigger than one okay so that's how you stretch it vertically to stretch it horizontally is a little bit different 
I'm not going to talk about that yet. There's probably going to be a question on it. But we need to stretch this guy vertically by multiplying something out in front. And if it, if we want to stretch it vertically and not compress it, so the alter alternative is squishing it, and that's called a vertical compress. And you do the same thing, okay? So if you have y equals f of x, you do the same thing, except this time, if you want to compress it, okay? If you want to compress it, you multiply by a fraction. So think about like one half or one third. So this guy is a compression. This guy's being multiplied by x. That's something different. These are actually, these two are actually horizontal stretches and compressions. Those are a little confusing, to be honest. They're not talked about a lot, horizontal compress and stretch. So we want a vertical one because it's going up and down faster. So we need to look at this guy, not this guy. That's going to compress it. It's getting stretched out, so it's A because it's getting multiplied by 2. And you can even check that if with a X and Y table and see the points. Oh, my gosh, we got a lot going on here. So G is a transformation of F. What's going on? So we have a couple things going on. It looks here that we are doing some funky stuff. So um, what's happening here is a couple things. All right. This is a tough one, actually, and it's a good one to end on. <laughs> so this blue one. The blue one is clearly the vertex is right here. It's good to kind of identify that. And the other thing that's happening is it's getting wider fast. See how it's going wider fast like that? Okay. And then see how the vertex is all the way over here this time? Well, what does that mean? That means we reflected. So a reflection, okay, two different ways to get a reflection. We have y equals f of x. That's our base. If we put a negative out in front, that's over the x-axis. Whoops, I don't know why I put a. x-axis. So if you put a negative out in front of the function, that reflects it over the x-axis. That means it would go down here and it would look like that. That's not the case here. If we put the negative next to the x on the inside, okay? So this would look like, let's say you have your base parent function like that. That would look like on the inside versus y-axis, or sorry, that's y-axis, versus x-axis. X-axis would look something like this. y equals negative square root of x. See the difference? Negative on the outside, reflect over the x-axis. Negative on the inside, reflect over the y-axis. And that's what's happening here. Look at the y-axis. It's getting reflected over it. So it's getting reflected over that y-axis. So when you, we know we need a negative on the inside. That boils it down to three options. Okay, we have three options. We got, or two options. We got this one and this one. Okay, A and C only. Now we need to decide which of these is it. So now it comes down to another funky thing. So we talked about vertical stretch. Okay, and vertical compress. They're kind of related in terms of horizontal compress and horizontal stretch, but horizontal stretch is just a little bit different. So if we have, I needed some room here. I wonder how I, ah, object eraser, check this out. That's what I wanted earlier. All right. So horizontal stretch is when we have A on the inside next to, so we have F of A times X. Okay, so you can see the difference here y equals a times f of x is vertical and then we have horizontal here all of these are horizontal that they're showing all all of it okay so and we're looking for something that flips over the y-axis so we need we know we need the negatives but now which is it is it this one third or is it this three here's how it works it's counterintuitive. So just like if the A was a big number, it's going to stretch vertically. And if it's like a fraction, it's going to compress. It's the exact opposite with horizontal. If A is between 0 and 1, it's going to stretch. So it's going to stretch out. And if A is between or bigger than 1, then it's going to compress. It's going to get squeezed in. Look at the picture here. Clearly, it's being horizontally stretched out, okay? If you take this, this blue one, take a look at the blue one, and you just pull it to the side, okay? I'm going to try to draw that so you can see it. And you pull it to the side, it's going to get turned into the red. 
it's not like a horizontal compress where you're like this, okay? That's slightly different and it's very similar to vertical stretch, but horizontal stretch, we're gonna pull it out. So between zero and one is our horizontal stretch. It's like the reverse. Again, just like if we add it to X and move to the left for X, if we multiply by a fraction, it's actually gonna stretch it out. It's like the exact opposite of vertical stretch. So we need to choose A. It, it would seem counterintuitive, but we need to choose A because that's what's gonna stretch it out horizontally. And there we go, that's our answer. So there you have it, you have all the different transformations there. The ones with the X on the inside are the counterintuitive ones. Those are the tricky ones that you need to be careful of. The vertical stretch and the vertical translations, those are the easy ones. So make sure you can review this, rewind it, leave a comment if you need help with this, or if you have a different question that didn't show up in this video. Come back to this channel if you need any help with content, leave a comment for something specific, not even Khan Academy related, and I look forward to seeing you next time right here on West Explains Best.